Well, let me ask about Gregoire Perlman, Keith. Uh -huh. um, yeah. This is a very weird man. He, his problem is something called the Poincaré conjecture. What is that? Okay. And who is he, who is Gregoire? So, Gregory Perlman. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's, right. he's a very unusual case. We're going to be end up, we're going to be talking about a very atypical case, although a very famous one. But the Poincaré conjecture goes back to the beginning of the 20th century, Henry Poincaré. And one way to think about it was, the, think of the following question. You go back to, to ancient Greece, and the Greeks lived on what seemed like a flat earth, but by using mathematics, they were able to figure out that the world was in fact spherical, and they even calculated the diameter with great accuracy. So using mathematics, you can step out of the world you live in and see what it must look like. We didn't look at the, we didn't actually see that image of the world. We didn't know with our eyes that it was spherical until NASA sent spacecraft up and we took photographs. Right. But the Greeks had figured it out by using mathematics. Could we, as creatures now living in a three-dimensional world, could we understand the shape of the universe we live in by using mathematics so, as it were, step outside the universe? For example, the universe may be like the inside of a sphere, and that you could move around freely, or maybe it's like the inside of a big inner tube that you can keep going round and round, or something more complicated like a pretzel. So there are lots of shapes the universe might be. Could we figure it out using mathematics? Poincaré came up with a method that can be understood in those terms. And here's what Poincaré did. We've actually got a little video we can show about Why this one. Why is it called a conjecture? Because oh, it's on it, it, Perelman actually was the you one that proved this, true. 2002. So if we can roll that tape, well, let's okay. imagine we want to understand the shape of the universe is in. So we're going to get in a spacecraft and we're going to go out and we're going to start splaying out a rope behind us. We're going to go all around the universe on this tour and we're eventually going to come back again and create a big loop that will track the path that we've followed. So here we go round and round. It's a big world. It's going to take us a while to get round. But we're going to come back and when we come back, we're going to be able to find the tail that we left behind, the end of that rope, and then we're going to start to pull the rope tight. And when we start to pull it tight, one of two things can happen. You start tugging, oh, it's stopped. Maybe you're in the inside of an inner tube and you can't pull it any tighter. Or the following might happen. You pull it and pull it and pull it, and it pulls down. So those are the two possible ways it could come about. If you can't pull it together, you know that the universe is not like the inside of a sphere. It be, it's more like an inner tube or something like that. If you could always, if you did this infinitely many times, if you could always pull it together, the Poincaré conjecture says, then you will be able to conclude that you are indeed on the inside of a sphere, a three-sphere. If you can always do that. This is not practical in the way that the Greeks were, <laughs> but it does say that with mathematics, there is no limit to the ability of what we can find out. With mathematics, in principle, we can find out the shape of the universe we live in without stepping outside of that universe. We can look through the eyes of God, if you like, at our universe using mathematics.